648, our top stories here, starting with breaking news. A house destroyed this morning in mm -hmm. Parenton, a three alarm fire. That call around 3.30 on Benton Circle. We've been told that thankfully there were no injuries here to report, but one person inside woke up to the sound of their smoke alarm going off, finding the couch on fire, and everyone was able to rush out of the home safely. The scene since cleared. Still no word, though, on a cause, but the house is a total loss that has already been torn down. Now. Well, former President Donald Trump inching closer to a rematch against President Joe Biden in the November general election. The former president winning the nation's first primary last night against former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley. Haley telling her supporters that she is staying in the race despite the losses in New Hampshire and the Iowa caucuses. New details on the Rochester City employee arrested during a drug ring crackdown. 46-year-old Timothy Jackson was taken into custody after police searched a home on Wilmot Street. He was working as a part-time outreach worker for Pathways to Peace. Seven others were arrested in this year's long investigation. At the house, police recovered guns, ammo, more than $23,000 in cash. Court documents say law enforcement had been investigating Jackson's involvement in the trafficking of fentanyl and cocaine, along with acts of violence going back to 2021. Jackson for now is charged with criminal possession of a weapon in the second and third degrees. The seven others arrested face gun and drug charges. The trial continues this morning for a man accused of killing a Rochester mother who was burned to death. 54-year-old Troy Parker accused of setting 38-year-old Fantasia Stone on fire at her home uh, apartment on Jefferson Avenue last spring. The prosecution says that Parker sprayed Stone with lighter fluid, then set her on fire, while the defense argues another man, one of the prosecution's witnesses, was present at the scene as well and claimed that he's responsible for Stone's death. They'll be back in court this morning at 9.30. The victim's sisters saying they're glad that they're at least getting closer to closure. A case out of the capital region where a jury convicted a man of second degree murder in the deadly shooting of a 20 year old woman riding in an SUV that made a wrong turn into his driveway. Kevin Monahan was also found guilty of reckless endangerment and tampering with physical evidence after the death of 20 year old Kaylin Gillis. We have a new update regarding public safety in Rochester as Mayor Malik Evans discusses strategies used to deliver hope and opportunity for the community. This does include suppression, intervention, prevention, and now accountability. Evans says that the number of violent crimes is going down. Shootings are down. Gun deaths have also dropped 29%. Homicides down by 32% and a total of 55 in 2023 overall. Shooting victims have reduced from a peak of 419 in 2021 to 289 in 2023, a 31% reduction. Along with these reductions, our clearance rate for murders remains over 60%, uh, including the cold cases, which you may have seen recently. We continue to work on those. A new public safety dashboard has also been announced that will allow you to keep track of all those percentages. We're told that should officially launch soon. Well, in response to numerous mail thefts across the Rochester area, New News 8 is investigating at least one particular incident that was an inside job. Last week, a former letter carrier in Rochester pled guilty to charges of mail theft. We're told that Marlene Cruz stole mail along her route from January 2022 through November of 2023. Stills from video surveillance in her assigned truck show her opening the letters, looking inside, and sometimes taking things like cash and gift cards. The postal police officer associated Association president explains that a reduction in the number of postal police officers does have an impact on these types of crimes. Without the assistance of postal police officers, it has been an absolute disaster. Now, don't get me wrong, postal police are not going to stop the mail theft epidemic. I mean, it, it's, it's gotten that bad. But we can make a dent in it. I mean, if you know these 10 blue collection boxes are being hit over and over again, why not have postal police patrol those 10 collection boxes? An audit from the inspector general's office is looking into the post office's response to mail theft. They also say they found that USPS has not finalized an overall plan to address these crimes and any such plans to do so might not even be set in place until the fall. Neighbors in Clifton Springs concerned they've been exposed to toxic fumes released into the air by a manufacturing plant in town got the chance to voice concerns to state officials. Last year, the Department of Environmental Conservation deemed GW Lisk that plant a public and environmental threat recommending a 
full cleanup of the grounds. At this meeting, people took their questions directly to the DEC along with the Department of Public Health. I spoke with the gentleman from the state and he said that uh, that they he showed me a map where everything is contained and it's a very small area relative to where we live and everything so I'm not concerned anymore like I was. No, I'm just worried about the environment and stuff and for the kids because we have neighbor kids that they go swimming in the brook. And um, you know, we don't want anything to happen to the kids in the community. Part of the cleanup includes what's known as bioremediation. That is a long process, could take months, maybe even years to complete. Two first responders are back at work again after they were injured on the scene of that fiery car crash outside the Kodak Center on New Year's morning that killed four people, including the suspect who sped up towards a crowd leaving a concert. In the early hours of that morning, David Eshelman and Julie Purick were the first to respond. The two suffered from smoke and gas inhalation. Eshelman was first released from the hospital. Purick was later sent home after she was taken off a ventilator to recover. In a post on social media this week, both the pair Medics were seen outside a critical care transport unit posing with the caption saying we're back in business. U Prep, which is an all boys charter school in Rochester, says they're no longer eyeing any spaces to move into East Ridge Road on Arondacoit. That proposal had initially drawn pushback from some of the town members. School leaders now say they're looking at a spot on Maple Street in the city instead. That building used to be home to the Urban Choice Charter School, which was shut down by the state last year with more than 450 students and even more incoming. You prep has previously said they just need the room. The foundation of a unique nationwide project now coming to Rochester, spreading the message of solutions over suspensions. This is a storytelling effort called Mass Story Lab, which includes talking about people sharing their stories who are directly affected by justice issues. The organizers join parents and kids at the Montgomery Neighborhood Center for this event, focused on ways to end the school to prison pipeline. That is a phrase used to talk about the growing problem of students who repeatedly get into trouble on campus. They get expelled and then they end up behind bars. The Story Lab model is based on a human rights approach to storytelling in which we bring people together um, to give testimony about their shared experiences around a systemic uh, injustice, in this case, school discipline, um, and the overreach of school discipline. The Solutions Not Suspensions Bill aims to use alternative means to discipline students, especially those that are younger in elementary schools. The children's agenda among those advocating for a limit to suspensions. Before we get to your forecast, let's check that Wednesday morning commute at 655. Expressways 495, 90, 390, all looking good there as we're taking the view over the west side. If anything pops up in terms of congestion, we'll let you know coming up at 725. For now, James, just want to warn people of the heading out. Uh, side streets, neighborhoods, mm. a little uh, slushy there. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. slushy. But from that camera, it looks like visibility is improving. Yeah, yeah. Which is good to see. We had some fog earlier. Mm -hmm. Still maybe some patchy fog going to be in spots. But otherwise, temperatures continue to warm. We are above freezing for the next couple of days. That is in including the overnight lows hanging out in the upper 30s. There's those 40s there. So let's go through this day by day. The rain showers for you today don't kick up until about noontime. So we'll say that's really focused in the afternoon and evening. Couple of downpours there. Then we're dry for a lot of Thursday, although there could be some fog around. But the rain returns overnight and then into Friday. And then we're dry most of Friday. A lot of these days you see the rain showers. It's kind of sandwiched in the overnight hours, which is always nice. I think we finish off the week really nice. I think the snowpack is gone by Friday. And then Saturday looks pretty good. Uh, should be maybe even some partial sun before we kind of cool back down to finish off the month. Almost 50 there on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be dry, wow. too. I, I don't expect too much rain there. Uh, so it should be a decent day. All right. Lots of opportunity there. Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing your morning with us here on News 8 at Sunrise. Coming your way at 7 CBS Mornings. We're back at 725. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.